Drake May was the number three overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft for your New England Patriots. And he's eager to put his own stamp on Pat's Nation. Stick around. You're about to be locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful, and thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage, and hopefully your first listen each and every day. Remember, Locked On Patriots is not only a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, but we are also free and available on all platforms. So be sure to smash that subscribe button and download and follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts to ensure that you're getting the latest episode as soon as it's available. I'm your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on X at M-B-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And while you're out there showing some social media love to Locked On Patriots, please follow our account there as well at L-O underscore Patriots. And Pats fans, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Patriots fans, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. It is always an honor to be joined on Locked On Patriots by the amazingly insightful local experts that we have here mm-hmm. on the Locked On Podcast Network. And today, we have such an expert to tell us all about the new main man in Foxborough. That's right. Your new quarterback, number 10 on your roster sheet, soon to be number one in your heart, Drake May. And here to lend his expertise on the subject is the host of Locked On Tar Heels. He is also the co-host of Locked On College Basketball. He is my friend and colleague, Isaac Shade. Isaac, welcome to Locked On Patriots. Thank you for taking the time out to join us here today. Mike, it's great to be with you. I uh, I have grown up my entire life in the South, but I have an aunt who lives in the Boston area and is a massive Pats fan. So I'm all in. It's an honor to be here, brother. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And it'll be good to have some Tar Heel blood up here in New England. We're all psyched. We're excited about it without any question. Because, Isaac, for the first time since 1993, when the Patriots selected Washington State quarterback Drew Bledsoe, number one overall, uh, we think he may have a budding career and being a stand-up comedian now because of what we saw on Sunday. Uh, got his own winery up there. He's doing very well for, him, for himself. We want to see those high-level Patriots draft picks do well. Uh, and who knows? Maybe Drake May has the ability to do it, but he is the first top five draft pick selected quarterback the New England Patriots have had since Drew Bledsoe in 93. So once again, my friend, Patriots Nation is excited. Drake is excited. Using his own words, when he had his jersey introduction here in New England, he's super pumped to get to work. Everyone's waiting to see that arm strength. We all want to see that athleticism. But you got a chance to study Drake up close. In your coverage of the Tar Heels, you saw more of this guy than really a lot more people on the planet right now. So (laughs) when you look back on Drake's tenure as a Tar Heel and his time in Chapel Hill, When did you realize that this kid had the ability and the stuff to make an elite level draft pick? What's funny, Mike, is he and uh, Jacoby Criswell were in a quarterback competition the entire summer, the entire spring, frankly, and summer leading up to the 2022 season. Literally heading into week zero, Carolina played week zero that year. Game week was when Mac Brown announced who would be the starter. Like until that point, there there wasn't even certain to be the starter for the Tar Heels. And then game week, he gets named that he's won out the competition. To be fair, that had been my assumption all along is that he would. But Mike, I legitimately, I crap you not. After game <laughs> two, I tweeted, or I X'd, I guess in this day and age. Yeah. <laughs> this might be way too early, and it's not been against great competition but Drake May is going to be in the Heisman competition and conversation in year one. Uh, I mean, it was pretty quick that you could see like, oh, 
this dude is something different that you just don't see every day. And frankly, I've seen a slew of not that at North Carolina. <laughs> we just don't get them coming through the way some other collegiate programs did. So, Mike, to answer your question quite simply, very quickly. Yeah, and that doesn't surprise me. When you take a look at Drake's resume, before we get into the intangibles, because we will talk about those in just a moment as sure. well, 63% of his passes completed last season alone, 3,608 yards, 24 touchdowns, up to nine interceptions. He also ran for nine touchdowns as well. So it's been a little while since we've seen a quarterback here in New England with the capability of being a dual threat. Cam that wasn't Newton, Tom, Tom wasn't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I don't think Tom is uh, built to run all that much. Um, you know, I think his uh, he's better off in the pocket. He, he had a pretty nice career doing what he did. But bottom line, it's been a long time since the Patriots have had that type of dual threat. Cam Newton ran the ball well here in New England, but the passing game struggled for a lot of different reasons, and his arm wasn't necessarily what it was back when he played for Carolina. So Patriots right now have a chance to do something they haven't done in quite a while, and we'll get more to Drake's logistical fit here in New England and the type of offense Alex Van Pelt wants to run in just a moment, folks. But 26 total games for the Tar Heels. 611 of 942 pass attempts. So you're talking career numbers here in college, a 64.9% completion percentage, 7,929 yards, 62 touchdowns to only 16 picks. And he gained 1,147 rushing yards, 296 carries, found the end zone 16 times with his legs. If that doesn't tell Patriots fans to love the Drake, I don't know what's going to. Those are electric numbers, and we're hoping that he's going to be able to do, uh, translate those type of numbers to what we're going to see on the field in New England. How amazing was it to watch this kid evolve into a young kid coming in, taking the reins of a college you know, football program, and making it all the way to the number three pick in the NFL draft? It, it really was a special thing to watch, Mike. And when we talk more intangibles and, and things around him, I'll say more about why that is in particular. But like, I mean, you, you mentioned the rushing yards. And look, for those uh, of you watching or listening to this show who aren't aware, in college, keep in mind, sack numbers are taken out of your rushing total. And at a place like North Carolina, where we'll just say the offensive line isn't the uh, the strength of the team, Drake May was running for his life quite often and uh, receiving quite a bit of sack yardage. So th that number of his total rushing yards, in fact, is deflated quite a bit from what it actually should be. His uh, first year at the helm as the, the full-time starter, Drake May led North Carolina in rushing yards that season, Mike. <laughs> Thankfully, last year, he didn't have to, and I think Carolina was a better team for it. They had one of the best running backs in the nation in Omarion Hampton, which will be somebody to watch for in next year's draft, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but, but Drake May can do all of that with his legs, and if it were not for his arm, I think we'd be talking more about what a special athlete he is on the ground as well. And you don't expect it when you look at him or hear him talks because he's just an aw shucks white boy like me, uh, <laughs> just with this massive frame and elite athleticism um, that that can do it. And so the, the total package is there. Yes, there are some deficiencies he'll have to work on as just about any other quarterback would coming out of college. But the good thing that I love about what Drake May's stats and build are is that anything that I see as a deficiency right now is something that can be worked on. The stuff that only God can give you, he's already got. Yeah, absolutely. And definitely the right attitude, too. You mentioned Tom Brady before. Drake was very candid uh, the night that we spoke to him shortly after being drafted, as well as the time that he spent on the following day here in New England on that Friday, speaking to reporters while he met the Crafts and received his jersey, got a chance to look at his locker. He said, look, he says, Tom Brady is the greatest to ever do it, but I'm not Tom Brady, and I can't try to be him. I'm going to be Drake May. You're going to get Drake May. And I think Patriots fans are going to be really happy with that all the way around but I'm glad you mentioned the intangibles on the field and the coaching he will need on the field to succeed. Because right now, a lot of Patriots fans and a lot of national pundits are saying Drake May is the ideal fit in Alex Van Pelt's offense. Well, Isaac watched this guy as closely as anyone, and he's going to lend his expert professional opinion on the subject in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. 
Listen up, Locked On listeners. It's winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, so don't delay. Do it today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Patriots fans, thank you once again for joining us here today on Locked On Patriots. Isaac Shade, host of Locked On Tar Heels, joining us to talk all things Drake May. Your new man under center, or at least playing the quarterback position. He won't always be taking snaps under center. The guy can do it all along that line. And in the previous segment, Isaac, we talked a lot about what made Drake May such a standout at North Carolina, especially on the field and his statistical prowess. And perhaps best known for his elite arm strength, I think really up here, especially in New England, that seems to be what everyone gravitates toward when they're looking at YouTube clips or social media clips. They want to take a look at this guy's arm, this cannon for an arm that he's got. And he showed it off on several occasions, both in-game and during pro, uh, pro day workouts. But the velocity that he can put, the touch on the ball that he can put, and being able to make any throw required of him is really what made me fall in love with this kid a few months ago and said, yeah, this is the guy, if everything falls the way the Patriots want it to, this is going to be the guy that I think navigates their offense best. One of the better navigators of the entire field, in my opinion, in this year's draft class, great athleticism. And what I've noticed more and more in the film that I've watched on him is that when the play breaks down, he's got the agility and he's got the instinct as well to turn those off script options into big gains. Sometimes to his own detriment. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But <laughs> offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt, new job here, new era in New England, new head coach in Gerard Mayo. He's known for his strong relationships with quarterbacks and especially ones that are capable of driving his style of offense. Alex likes to run an offense that's predicated on a strong running game, use that to open up play action, facilitate play action, and then take deep shots down the field. Isaac, when I describe Alex Van Pelt's offense and you start playing in your head everything you know about Drake May, um, I'm going to channel my inner Vinny Gambini here for just a moment. Does the defense's case hold water? Do the New England Patriots have the ideal fit in their offense under Alex Van Pelt in Drake May? No, that case is full of holes and the water's dropping out of it everywhere for the defense, Mike. Uh, look, when, when you say uh, play action and deep shots down the field, all my happy feels are going off inside of me because as you talked about with Drake's arm, he can make every throw in the book and even the ones that aren't in the book. And that's what I love about this kid. You, you talked about as a play breaks down, Drake just has these instincts. He even talked to this past year. I remember, I forget what game it was after or what press conference, but just mentioning like, honestly, I, I kind of really love those backyard football throw away the playbook moments because this is a kid that grew up with four brothers. This is a kid who grew up with a dad who played quarterback at North Carolina before him and, and, and just thrives in those moments. You, you talked about the ridiculous throws that he can make this dude threw a left-handed touchdown this year when he realized the play was breaking down folks if you haven't seen that <laughs> you gotta go youtube it right now just drake may left-handed touch whatever you gotta search <laughs> to find it and He's so right mike up. you're spot on with that i mean it's absolutely unreal and so his ability the, the instincts to run that type of offense right there i i feel very confident that he can run what you just described to me about coach van pelt's offense Sign me up for Drake May as the head of that all day long. And what's great about it, though, is you know how earlier, Mike, you said, and I loved how you put this, that um, he said, I'm not Tom Brady. I'm Drake May, and I'm going to be Drake May. Some guys might say that, and they're like, yeah, me, I'm him, <laughs> right? Forget Tom Brady. When Drake May says that, he mm. means it out of humility, not Absolutely. out of pride. What he means is, I am, as you said, I am in such reverence of Tom Brady that I shouldn't try to emulate him. I should try to be the best version of Drake May and the best version of Drake May that can fit within Alex Van Pelt's offense and the entire scheme of what the New England Patriots are trying to do. That's what Drake May means when he says that. 
Absolutely. And I could not agree more. And you see the humility and the respect that he has for the organization. Um, you could actually see him looking around in Gillette Stadium and away from the camera, away from the microphone and the public comments. He caught a couple of glimpses of those championship banners that hang above Gillette Stadium. And he understands the importance of this franchise and the importance of winning and a continuing a tradition of winning in this franchise and bringing that back. I think that's something he looks for as a challenge and a way for him to write his own chapter here in New England, independent of Tom Brady, independent of the Bill Belichick era and the six championships that were won during that time. There are always going to be revered moments here in New England, but it doesn't mean that something great cannot still be born. And I think that's where Drake May is looking. I got to play devil's advocate for just a moment because the knock on Drake May coming into this draft was that... And I wrote about this for Sports Illustrated a couple of weeks ago, saying that he's yet to master the art of temperance all the time, Uh, meaning that that daredevil-like play style that he has can be exciting to watch. It's fun. He has a lot of success with it. But at the pro level, it can lead to costly mistakes. And if you're a fan of the replacements the way I am, yeah, that's right, folks. I said it. Um, You talk about (laughs) about Shane Falco talking about quicksand. Things go wrong in one thing and then another and then another. Sometimes players that have yet to master that art of temperance can find themselves in quicksand early enough. And sometimes it can be difficult for a quarterback to come out of it. You talked about him earlier being willing to get the coaching. Is this something that you believe can be coached out of him, something that with the proper environment, Drake can grow? Or is there genuine concern on behalf of some Patriots fans that this could be a problem if not addressed soon? It's a great question. I understand the concern, but I'd like to contextualize the concern, Mike, from a Chapel Hill standpoint, if I could. First off, what you got to, I want to say one quick thing, Mike, about what you said about championships. Drake May, folks, is a humble, aw shucks, down south, yes sir, no ma'am kind of kid. But please, Patriots fans, Foxborough faithful, Mike, I've heard you say, <laughs> do not mistake that for a that for a lack of confidence or an inability to lead, or perhaps most importantly, a killer instinct to compete in everything. And Mike, I give that context to set up the context to the question of what you just asked me. Because he is such a fierce competitor, at times at North Carolina, I have seen him feel the weight of the world on his shoulders and try to make too many plays because his arm is so good. Because he knows I can bowl over most dudes in college football, right, with my body and frame. So he's going to go out and hero a little bit. The other side of it, is that North Carolina's defense in Drake May's two years in Chapel Hill was quite frankly anemic under Gene Chizik. So North Carolina had to win with offense. Translation, every single snap and every single down was like critical to Drake May. Sometimes I feel like he tried to get to third down because he wanted to thrive under that instead of succeeding on first or second, right? right? Um, And so because of that, there were times when Drake pushed too much tried to put a ball into too tight a window, tried uh, to leave the pocket too quickly, thinking, I got to get out, I got to go, because the offensive line's not going to hold up. One of the things that I've said to a couple people in the lead up to the draft is if you take Drake May out of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, which I'm glad we don't have to, and put him in on, on a different, more elite team, I don't think we see some of the flaws that we've seen in terms of pushing too much. Mm-hmm. Yes, maybe, maybe the lack of footwork still shows up, And that's something that's going to have to be coached out of him. But the other things that you asked me about, I understand the concerns, but I think they were North Carolina contextual. And I say somebody, I say that as somebody that has to cover and, you know, kind of cheer for success for North Carolina, but recognizing that it's just not always there. So that to me is not a long-term concern. Drake may, as you said, is crazy coachable and is somebody that's going to hear every bit of that. And is, for example, as part of him trying too much, he often Superman go flying through the air and put his body at risk. Mac Brown repeatedly had to say to him, Drake, your body is too important to put it on the line. We need it out there. And he heard that. And this past year stayed rooted on the ground a lot more. So I'm not overly concerned long-term. Folks from the great smoky mountains to the Pimlico sound. I think counselor shade has made his case in a Tar Heel (laughs) tribunal. That was great. My friend, that was absolutely flawless. And you know what? It's exactly what Patriots fans. I don't want to say want to hear, 
because yes, they did want to hear that without any question, but I think it's what Patriots fans believe and they needed to hear someone else say it. And I'm glad that it was you, someone who's covered him and has seen this kid on a day in and day out basis. Again, folks, that's why we call in the experts here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It is your team every day because we're not only bringing you your team every day, we're covering your team every day. And that's something that I don't think you find anywhere else. And I'm so glad that Isaac was able to lend that thicket of wisdom and counsel. And if I may add a little bit of redirect, I think it feeds right in to what happened when Drake came up here on his top 30 visit, right into the film room with Alex Van Pelt. Alex is showing him footage of what he did with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, and he's showing him breakdowns of what he did in Cleveland. And it had an effect on Drake. Drake mentioned that several times in the remarks that he's made to the media, both in comfortable settings when he does WEEI's radio show, and then again in formal remarks to the media post-draft and the day after the draft as well. So obviously, these are things that are going to be a staple of the relationship between Alex Van Pelt and Drake May, and Patriots fans are hoping that it continues to lead to good things on the field. And Isaac, that leads me quite nicely into our wrap-up segment here on Locked On Patriots because, Pats fans, you all know the ups and the downs, the goods and the bads of drafting Drake May at number three overall. He's going to be your new face of the franchise. He's going to be your new quarterback one. Can he be that on day one? Isaac Shade is going to lend his wisdom and counsel on the subject as we wrap things up here on the Locked On Patriots podcast a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, game off. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. Mike, you already talked about that. But there is just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. You can get unique stickers that you can trade with a friend to complete albums for big prizes. You get cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with. And the best part, hilarious emojis for taunting all of your friends when you smash their buildings or you ice their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or a robot pachinko machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now free on the Google Play or the App Store. Game on! fans thank you so much for joining me here today on locked on patriots and i thank my good friend and colleague isaac shade host of locked on tar heels for joining me here to illuminate all of you in patriots nation on the drafting of drake may at number three overall as your new patriots quarterback it's been overwhelmingly positive and for good reason i think isaac has made as solid of a case as you possibly can make for drake i'm ready to put him out there but guess what folks And I know you're all nodding your head and saying, thank God, I don't coach the team. (laughs) The New England Patriots have said several times that the best player is going to play. It was the bedrock principle up here in New England under Bill Belichick. Gerard Mayo is continuing that tradition, and it looks like Alex Van Pelt's going to continue to buy into that. A lot of people think that Drake may be wise, or the Patriots may be wise, to keep him on the bench to start the season allow him to grow into his greatness and watch a veteran quarterback take the reins a little bit, see how it's done, and then go in and be able to make your mark. Jacoby Brissett, who's been a journeyman quarterback, spent some time here in New England under Tom Brady and under Jimmy Garoppolo, went on to have a pretty good career with Indianapolis, Washington, Cleveland, played well. He's back here in New England, and a lot of people believe that that signing was to ensure that he will be able to mentor this next quarterback of the future, which just happens to be now Drake May. There are some rumblings throughout Patriots Nation that Drake may have all the intangibles necessary to prove the doubters wrong, to come out and earn the job as early as the end of training camp, which means he could be QB1 on day one. When you look at all the intangibles, not just what he brings to the table on the field, Isaac, but what you know about him character-wise, off the field, the entire Drake May package, do you believe 
he can be quarterback one on day one. And I'm going to put you on the hot seat here. Do you believe he should be? Mike, here's the thing about Drake May. I absolutely believe he can be. But here's what you got to know about Drake May being QB1 on day one is that he's 21. This is a young kid that we have to keep in mind. He has been through the ringer. He's got two brothers that won national championships. His brother, Luke, national champion basketball player at North Carolina. His other brother, Cade, a national champion pitcher at Florida. Like it, This is a kid that's seen it all. But he is still a kid that's just barely old enough to drink in our great country, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, you think about somebody like Jaden Daniels, who just went one pick before him, that dude's 23 years old. And at, I know that's like just two years, but in this season of life, that's a big two years, my man. And so we're talking about Drake May that absolutely has the capability, the work ethic, the drive, determination, and desire to be the starter on day one. But as we've alluded to with his, humility, his willingness of spirit to be team first rather than Drake May first. If it is best for Jacoby Brissett to be QB one on day one, Drake May will not pout. He will gladly grab that clipboard and say, man, I'm going to be the dude right behind you, Jacoby. I'm going to be there. And if we get a Drew Bledsoe injury that leads to a Tom Brady uh, <laughs> career uh, to, go, to go back a little bit in Pat's history, so be it, right? And, and obviously, I don't hope for an injury to Brissett. That'd be terrible. But you, you get the point. Like, he is going to do whatever's best for the team. Mm -hmm. Should he be QB1 on day one? If he outperforms Jacoby Brissett in camp and in everything else, absolutely do it. Mm -hmm. Pull the trigger because he's going to be there and he's going to show up and do everything asked of him to be ready to do that. But if he's not, here's the other thing. He's got the self-awareness to say, look, Coach Mayo, Coach Van Pelt, I feel like I'm pretty close, but it's not me yet. Jacoby needs to be the dude. Like, that's who mm. this kid is, man, and I love it, and we've seen it over and over and over again. He's going to do what's best for the team. But at the end of the day, everything's there to do it. It's just a matter of can he put it together? What is this, early May in the next five months before week one? Yeah, that is so refreshing to hear. And again, it echoes the statements that we've heard from Gerard Mayo, who said prior to the draft that he believed that Drake was someone that brings a lot of energy, has the leadership ability, uh, mentioned his ceiling, said the exciting thing is that there's really not a ceiling for Drake May. He's the sky's the limit. This kid can go as far as he wants to go. It's about determining the floor. And that's something that I think the coaching staff is at work doing now. They'll do it as they evaluate him on the field. Minicamp starts in a couple of days. You know they're going to be keeping a sharp eye on what he's going to be able to do in that environment. And as mandatory minicamp comes in and then training camp, then you're really going to get an idea of what this kid can do. And maybe even a little bit in the preseason, yeah, it's going to be fun times evaluating him. But I'm glad that you mentioned Drake May's attitude as well because he's alluded to this. He's definitely shown that he does have that type of maturity, saying that I look forward to being in the Patriots offense. Jacoby's a great guy. I'm looking forward to working with him. I know they've had a lot of success up there in the past. He understands Mayo has been a part of these championship teams, and he's going to listen when he talks without any question. And he just wants to find, I think, a way to contribute to Patriots Nation, find his own way. And I think that way is going to endure him to Patriots Nation, just like you've done, Isaac, to Patriots Nation <laughs> today, by really, I think, getting everyone excited to watch Drake May on the field. Folks, he is the expert, and we do not question his judgment here. This has been a blast, Isaac. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here today on Locked On Patriots. Before I let you go, my friend, please let everyone know where they can reach out to you, where they can interact with you, and uh, tell us a little bit about Locked On Tar Heels, Locked On College Basketball. Always great listens, folks. I highly recommend listening to them both. Isaac's one of the best in the business. The floor is yours, my friend. Thank you, uh, Mike. Uh, I'm most active on Twitter at Isaac Shade. Shade has a C in it. It's German. It means what a pity. I don't know. That's my life and heritage. Um, in terms of interacting with me, I'm always down to interact with fans. I love it when people reach out. Always want to respond as much as I humanly can. So if you've got other Drake make questions like, hey, this guy seems hokey. Is he really this humble? Is he really this kind of kid? You know, whatever. Yes, he absolutely is. You don't believe it's true, but it is. Anything you've got, 
I'm here for it. Bring it on. On Locked on Tar Heels, obviously North Carolina is a basketball first school almost always. So lots of transfer portal stuff for us right now. <laughs> Who's Carolina going to bring in? Locked on college basketball is a lot of the same stuff. Transfer portal, teams coming together and getting ready for the NBA draft. So would love to have you check it out. If you're a big college basketball fan, we go all year long, just like my brother Mike does, all the great work that he does for you guys here in Patriots country. Thank you so much, my friend. And I guarantee you the feeling is absolutely mutual. And folks, a lot of Jordan fans up here in New England. We, we don't get into the GOAT argument up here in New England too often. We're pretty sure that the GOAT wore number 12 for the NFL and the GOAT wore number 23 in Chicago and North Carolina for NBA coverage uh, and uh, NCAA. So uh, we know a lot of uh, fans up here will be interested in checking out the great work that Isaac does on Locked On Tar Heels. And of course, if you're a college basketball fan, a lot of you are up here. Check out Locked On College Basketball, one of the great listens you will find anywhere on this network or any network. And I say that without hesitation. Isaac, thank you for joining me here today. And folks, thank you all for joining me here today on Locked On Patriots. Still have more to come. Rookie mini camp previews, a little more of your mailbag questions. And of course, we're we'll continuing to break down all of our draft picks here on Locked On. So stay locked into Locked On Patriots. But in the meantime, on behalf of my friend and colleague, Isaac Shade, I'm Mike DeBate, reminding you all to stay safe and to stay well and to be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you back here again tomorrow on Locked On Patriots.